Hello class, this is Alpha. I'm your instructor for IBIS 200, Introduction to International Business. Uh, it's been a pleasure thus far. I've enjoyed reading some of the comments. I look forward to more comments. Um, let me talk a little bit more about comments. Uh, first week, I really wanted people to just uh, get used to the platform, and I know this started off in the middle of the semester, so quite difficult. So everybody got full marks, but it's clearly written in the rubric uh, who gets full marks and when the marks start to decrease. So the encouragement here is to get your comments in within the first four days of posting. This will allow for greater engagement. This will allow for um, greater conversation between classmates. All right. So with that said, in order to fulfill the discussion topics, you're going to have to answer the discussion prompts. And the, the first week's prompt was an introductory prompt. You know, you almost could have answered the prompt without watching the video. But as we move forward, uh, the prompts will be more tailored to the context within the video. Why is that important? Well, it's important because the video is a um, colloquial or an easy way to understand the material. It's not evident that everybody is going to get the same message out of the reading. Uh, we're not face to face and we can't pause uh, the class or the reading to make sure everybody got it. But uh, with the video, there is more things to stimulate thought. There's the imagery, there's the, the sound, there's the prompts of the question, and that will allow us to gather more information and make a cogent uh, argument or cogent uh, comment. All right, so that's why it's important to watch the videos. If you don't have a Peninsula Library card, or if you don't have a Skyline access code, well, please let me know. Uh, there's links in the, in the introductory letter I sent you and also in the beginning of the Canvas uh, introduction where you can find that. But let me know if you're, if you're not able to, to, to get that code because it's essential moving forward. All right. Moving forward, week two. We're getting into the thick of it early on. So we're going to start off by just looking at the general identity or uh, makeup of business, right? We're not going to jump into international business this right away. Although some of your questions were, were very good and I, I really look forward to getting at that point. But we're, this week, we're just going to be talking about business, right? What is a business? Um, and so a business works for with two things. They offer either a good or a service. You can be a political consultant, you can be a, a chiropractor, you can make skateboards, you can be a farmer, right? These, these are, are businesses. One are dealing with goods, the other one is dealing with services. In addition to uh, these two parameters, you can also uh, have a business for profit. You know, you say, well, you know what? This is a surfing uh, environment, country, or location. I want to make money, all right? There's nothing wrong with that. That's what we all want to do. We all want a good life. Right? But sometimes people say the identity of a good life is that the society and the community around you uh, are also uplifted. And so you may create something that's a not for profit. So you don't necessarily want to see uh, a bank of, you know, a lot of money in your bank account. You want to maintain your standard of living, but you also want to deliver a service or a need that you feel that municipality, the, the, the state, or the, the government is not delivering. All right, so these are some common identities. I, I, uh, I, I, I would ask you to look around you and find things that are for profit, not for profit, that you like. You know, what do I like to do? What do I like? So this will help you uh, gain a better understanding. Next is uh, factors of production. All right, so the building block of business. So we have five factors, uh, natural resources, labor, capital, knowledge, and entrepreneurship. These are uh, the drivers of business. This is where business goes to, right? They go to one of these factors. And believe it or not, they're the same all around the world. You have these same 
resources or factors of production that determine whether or not a business is, is going to start there or whether or not they're going to be successful. Uh, I'll take case in point here in the Bay Area. Uh, we are uh, a community uh, that has a strong sense of entrepreneurship. We have a lot of things that assist individuals becoming entrepreneurs as well as uh, a strong knowledge base from around the world and, and, and pretty good transportation, at least to get here. So um, that makes sense if you're going to do business like coding or app or things like that that fit this environment. You know that you don't necessarily have to have the best English or best knowledge of this area but there are enough people here that are trying to do the same thing. So the environment is set up for you to succeed. So these are some of the factors of production. All right, next, we're gonna be talking about understanding the business environment. Now, what does that mean? So you know the factors of production. These are sort of like the, the core elements. But on top of that, you need an environment that allows these factors to flourish. So things like economic forces, political and legal factors, demographic factors, social factors, and technology. These are some of the things that will allow uh, the, the rudimentary factors production to, to flourish. Um, we will be addressing these in the reading, but also in the discussion. All right. Moving on. How businesses and economics uh, economies work. Excuse me. So we talked briefly about it uh, in terms of where individuals came from, you know, how they see themselves uh, being successful in the international space, uh, and a lot of that has to do with what that environment looks like overseas. So yes, we talked the rudimentary factors of production. Then we went and talked about the business environment. And now we're going to go to the, the highest level, right? The 30,000 foot view. And here we're talking about social constructs like capitalism, uh, communism, socialism, uh, mixed economies. So these are the higher arching, something called the commanding heights. It was in the first video, right? These are the, these are the highest levels of, of society and how that society identifies itself. And so it's from there that the business environments are created and that the uh, manipulation of the factors of production are determined, right? And so it is through this sort of uh, ladder that we begin to understand what is our possibility for progression, for growth, okay? So first we're gonna look uh, domestically and then we're gonna transcribe or uh, transpose that into uh, another society and see if there's enough things that match that allows you to A, get a foothold, and B, uh, be successful in there, all right? So these are called the, uh, the, the business and work environment. All right, so a lot of this concept is broken up into two things, all right? So we, talked, we just talked about that ladder, we talked about capitalism, business environment, you know, whether or not this cor corruption, whether or not you're able to establish a foothold, if there are too many uh, legal hurdles, whether or not there's a, a resource for you, is there enough knowledge base in, in what you're trying to do? All right, so these, that's, that's the ladder, right? Okay, so how that ladder affects you in planning, it's called, uh, that's the econo economics, right? So you will think of two things. You would say, all right, on the macro level, uh, what is, how can I engage in this environment, right? So this is divorce of yourself. You're looking at how do the people operate? How do the people engage in this environment? How does the, the, the government, uh, the, the political leaders, the business leaders, how do they create, what is, the, what is the environment they're creating? And then you look at the micro. How do the consumers, how do the people adjust to the macro, uh, macro elements? Right, and so with these two uh, thought pro with these two variables, you're able to start mapping out your niche. You're saying, okay, well, apparently here, uh, people know that um, if you're going to be in transportation, 
you're going to have to have money to bribe the cops because the legal framework is so loose there's no there's no way of, of, of really being able to handle that so you're going to have to hire local people that understand how you know this is that's an extreme case but what i'm trying to put forth there is that um you need to understand also on the ground how people uh react to what the government has set up so that's the micro people personal households consumers macro uh, business leader government lawmakers all right um now jobs how are jobs in that in that environment or let's keep this domestic how are jobs in california so you'll find that in california uh there there is unemployment um th there's uh, the gig economy, these are all examples of, of employment and underemployment and unemployment. Seasonal workers, right? And so how, how, it, how is that being handled uh, by the leaders that we just mentioned earlier, right? So we're just going to take a quick look at that. Types of employment, frictional employment, structural employment, um, cyclical employment, and seasonal employment, right? All of these just help you get an understanding of how the people are engaged in the society. Now, why is that necessary? Well, if you have a good or a service, you want to get paid for this good or a service. So you need to be able to situate your business in an area where people can pay for it or want it uh, and, and pay later, however you want to structure that. But you're not going to be, if you, if you set up a chiropractor business in the winter months near uh, orange orange growers because you think oh those guys must be hurting after they pick all the oranges i'm going to do a chiropractic adjustment on them they're going to love it and massage well you find out that once you get there in the winter they're, they're seasonal so they no longer have the discretionary income the the extra income to pay you for this practice right so you want to make sure that you're doing that let's say you're a consultant and you say, okay, I'm going to go and teach people how to, how to code, right? And you find yourself in Wisconsin. And the individuals in Wisconsin uh, have not upskilled themselves. They, they haven't dealt with coding. They, they barely know what the internet is, right? So, so they're, having, uh, they're having unemployment issues. And maybe you can come in there and say, oh, if I gave you these skills. But your skill may be too high for them or, or, or things like that. So what I am mentioning here is to understand the populace and how they're, uh, you know, whether they're in a good balance or a bad balance in terms of reacting to the environment. Okay. Now, the environment, again, is predicated on micro policies, right? So that's the big picture. And things like monetary policy and fiscal policy. Now, where I'm just going to uh, brush over that monetary and, and, and fiscal uh, because I want to wait for the discussion. I want to wait for the discussion to see. I do not want to confuse people on this little short video about that. That gets very tricky. Uh, that gets to talk about um, uh, currency manipulation, um, the, the, uh, the borrowing rate, uh, the rate of T-bills, a lot of different things that start to, to get com people confused. But read the overview now. We will address it. It's important because it's how that resource is managed. Okay, So monetary and fiscal policies on a macro level. All right. And then on the, lastly, on the uh, micro level, we're going to talk about the nature of demand and the nature of supply. So as a business, at the end of the day, you want to sell your product when the price is high. However, consumers want to buy the product when the price is low, right? So it's, it's, it's a balance. And um, understanding the common principles for that in week one are, is going to help us as we go overseas. Because as we go overseas, we start to, under, we start to realize that there are other forces that make us uh, more conscientious. We have to start to think about how do we protect our businesses enter entering in new markets, uh, what is the structure there, and how are they dealing with that, right? So before we can understand what they're doing, 
we need to understand how we're doing so we can communicate. I remember somebody, uh, you know, I haven't gotten used to all the names yet, but somebody mentioned uh, uh, communicating without speaking, uh, the, the air, air airline uh, person, uh, Lufthansa. Well, that's pretty much what we're doing, right? We're going to be going into a, another country and try to communicate our value without really knowing their social mores or their, you know, their language on a colloquial level. But how do we do that, right? There are commonalities. Is, is that I know how to I react in my environment and I know the forces that are in my environment. I have a slight understanding of the forces that are in your environment. Now let me sort of go and discover a little bit more of the forces that are driving you. And then from there, I can try to see how I fit in. So that's what we'll be going over uh, this week. Uh, in addition to that, we'll be talking about the intersect of supply and demand. Uh, the concepts of oligarchy and monopoly, but um, they're all short reads. Yes, if you're in economics class, every one of these things can be drawn out into a, into a large discussion. But we're not in international uh, uh, in a um, economics class. We're in an intro to international business class. But we just want to provide the basics. All right. So do the overview of the basics. Read through it. Watch the video. Uh, it ties these basics into, into, into the discussion for international business. And um, yeah, continue the good work. Glad to have you aboard.